Global 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And we're following two big breaking stories for you this afternoon. Starting in Flint, Attorney General Bill Schutte has charged five officials with involuntary manslaughter, including the head of the Michigan Health Department and the former Flint emergency manager, Darnell Early. But first, a gunman opens fire at a Virginia baseball field where Republican lawmakers were practicing those shots lasting for five to 10 minutes with up to 100 shots fired. And we have learned since earlier this morning that one congressman was shot. House Majority Whip Steve Scalise is among at least four people who were injured in that shooting. Scalise is listed in stable condition right now. We have learned the identity of the shooter. That shooter has been identified as a 66 year old man from Illinois who has died from his injuries. Let's go now to Blaine Alexander who joins us from Alexandria. And good afternoon to you. Just a short while ago, President Trump addressed the country, speaking from the diplomatic room of the White House, and he confirmed that the suspect is now dead. He died from gunshots sustained when officers returned fire earlier this morning. Now, the suspect is being identified as James T. Hodgkinson, a 66-year-old man from Illinois. But right now, officials say that it is just too early to establish a motive. They don't know if congressional members were targeted. They're not calling this an assassination attempt, and right now, the FBI is stepping in to take over an investigation that is just getting underway. A man with a rifle opened fire this morning on Republican members of Congress practicing for a charity baseball game. We were doing batting practice and uh, all of a sudden we heard shots and uh, it was clear pretty quickly that there was a shooter there with a high powered rifle. Witnesses say the gunman sprayed the field with gunfire and Capitol Police officers engaged in a gun battle that lasted for several minutes. It, it went on for about 10 minutes, uh, a lot, dozens and dozens and dozens of shots fired. And then all of a sudden I hear loud explosions and I look up and there's a man with a gun. Fortunately, he's a good guy. Federal officials have identified the suspect as 66 year old James T. Hodgkinson from Illinois. At least five people were transported to nearby hospitals. Among those hit, House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. He's drug himself from the dirt infield to the grass outfield. Uh, there's a trail of blood. Uh, we can't help him. We're helpless. I mean, we're, we've got bats versus uh, rifle. Not good odds. Witnesses describe a terrifying scene followed by acts of heroism. I think the security detail saved a lot of lives because they attacked the shooter. This morning, President Trump spoke out from the White House. We may have our differences, but we do well in times like these to remember that everyone who serves in our nation's capital is here because, above all, they love our country. As the victims are being treated, police are just beginning their investigation into a possible motive. And we are now getting some updates on the conditions of those shot. Earlier today, when officials gave an update, they said that the two Capitol Police officers who were shot this morning are in good condition and they were praised for their brave acts in the face of that shooting. We also know that Congressman Steve Scalise, he is in the hospital. We're told that he's in stable condition. And when he spoke from the White House earlier today, President Trump wished him a full and speedy recovery. Live today in Alexandria, Virginia, Blaine Alexander, NBC News. And one of the congressmen who was at the baseball field when the attack happened was Michigan Representative Mike Bishop. Local force Rob Maloney joining us live now from our newsroom. And right, I understand that you talked to the congressman earlier this morning who described the, the hectic scene once those shots were fired. What did he have to say? Well, it was frightening stuff, Everard, to say the least. Congressman Mike Bishop today says that he's grateful for the majority whip security detail. He called them heroes who took down the man hunting him. And I mean hunting him and the rest of the baseball baseball team sent running for their lives. He saw the shooters start firing. He saw the whip get shot and he is, as you can well understand, shaken and saddened after getting shot at for at least, as we've heard, 10 minutes. He was hitting the dugout behind me and the chain link fence, just, you know, ping, 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 ping off the chain link fence. And uh, he was shot on a window of a car in the distance. I, 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 I just knew that, that that's why I knew he was firing my in my exact direction, <clears throat> other than the whizzing over my head. Republican Michigan Congressman Mike Bishop stood next to home plate awaiting his turn for batting practice this morning around 7 a.m. when he saw a man enter the chain link fence surrounded ball field at the third baseline with a rifle and shoot minority whip Steve Scalise and wanted to go help him, but... 
I didn't know how many rounds this guy had. Uh, I, I didn't know if it was one, two, three shots, if he was done or what. But then he proceeded to, to just go ape and, and fire one after the next. And you could he had one magazine after the next. It must have gone on for 10 minutes. At least one person was shot near him. He said the whip security detail returned fire, giving him and a group of people the chance to run out of the diamond and hide behind a nearby building where they were dodging more gunfire as the gunman moved around trying to shoot them. I've got blood on my shoes. I don't know whose blood it is. I don't know what's going on right now. I don't know how to even respond. I don't know how to react to it. Um, it's going to take a while to sink in. Well, the congressman says that he saw fellow congressman Dr. Bad Wen Brad Wenstrup of Ohio rush to the aid of the majority whip and performed life-saving medical treatment at second base. The doctor has a, a military experience and combat experience, and so Bishop said that he marveled at how calm the doctor was in saving the whip's life. Now, we have posted my entire interview with the congressman on ClickOnDetroit.com if you want to hear that in full and the chilling account of this attack, and we'll certainly have more coming up on Local 4 News at 4, 5, and 6. Reporting live from the newsroom, Rod Malonek, Local 4. Oh, very chilling indeed, Rod, hearing him describe those very moments. Um, very scary, in fact. Thank you for, for the update there. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell was just on a radio show with Congressman Bishop earlier this morning. I got a chance to speak with her by phone just after she heard what happened. She even talked about fearing for her own safety at times. I try not to think about it because I know that I am a target or work in a place that's a target 100% of the time. Whenever I defend my constituents in Dearborn, the um, vilification um, that comes and quite frankly threats at times is there. This is a baseball. It happens in Hawaii. I mean, yes, this was members of Congress there. And fortunately, Scalise had his security there or that what could have happened to these guys could have been far, far, far more devastating. And we're just thankful that it was not. Stay with Local 4. We're going to have continuing coverage throughout the afternoon on clickondetroit.com. Our Kimberly Gill is also going to have live reports from Washington, D.C. starting tonight on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. Uh, we're just thankful that uh, no one uh, else, there, no one lives were lost in this. We're also following breaking news from Flint now, where five officials are now facing involuntary manslaughter charges in connection with the Flint water crisis. Local 4 defender Kevin Dietz joins us now from Flint with more on the new charges filed today by Attorney General Bill Schutte. Kevin? Yes, and this is really about two things, who was charged and who was not charged. Let's start with who was not charged. Governor Rick Snyder was not charged because investigators say at this time there isn't enough evidence. But they also revealed to us today that they tried to interview the governor and he refused. And while they have turned documents over at the governor's office, they are still trying to get additional information and documents that they have not yet received. Now let's turn to who was charged. Nick Lyon, the Director of Health and Human Services, he was charged with involuntary manslaughter, a very serious charge that alleges, in, that alleges recklessness involving death. Authorities say that he was aware of the risk of the deadly Legionnaire's disease associated with Flint's water supply and did nothing. Also charged today, Eden Wells, she is the state's chief medical officer, and she was charged with obstruction of justice and lying to investigators. The investigators telling us today that people in Flint got sick, people in Flint died, and those responsible will be held accountable. Take a listen. After allegedly being informed of the growing Legionella situation in Flint, Nick Lyon failed to inform the public of this health threat a threat which cost the life of Robert Skidmore. I do not take this day as a joyous day. There are no winners here. We cannot bring back Mr. Skidmore. We can't bring back the lost loved ones that died from Legionella. We can't change the trajectory of children that were affected by lead poisoning. I wish we could turn back the hands of time, but we can't. Now there were four people who were previous there were four people who were previously charged and now their charges have been, been increased to involuntary manslaughter. That includes Stephen Bush with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality and his boss there, Lane Schechter Smith. 
also charged with involuntary manslaughter, Howard Croft. You may remember he was the city of Flint's public works director and Darnell Early, who is Flint's emergency financial manager. All of their charges have now been increased. 15 people in all are facing charges. 250 people have been interviewed. But as I said, the governor is not one of those. Investigators desperately want to interview him, but he has refused. We'll have much more coming up on this later today on Local 4. Kevin Dietz, Defenders. All right, and Kevin, we know you'll stay on top of it. Thank you. At least 12 people are dead after a high-rise apartment building in London catches fire. New at noon. The operation now underway to find survivors. Paul? Well, Evrod, we have some very beneficial rain here. It's been a dry month and some of us getting a good downpour here at the midday hour. However, the storms coming in this evening could be severe. I'll have a specific timetable for you just ahead. Doc? Tracking ticks from the backwoods to our own backyards. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, see how ticks are spreading in Michigan and why the problem could get a lot worse. And we are continuing to follow breaking news for you this afternoon from Alexandria, Virginia. That's where Representative Steve Scalise and at least three others were shot in what sources are calling a deliberate attack. One of the victims has been identified as lobbyist Matt Micah, a Western Michigan University graduate. Scalise is having surgery right now and we're told is in stable condition. The suspect in this incident was killed. He's been identified by law enforcement as James Hodgkinson from Illinois. We know that several Michigan congressmen were also at that baseball practice when the shots rang out, including Representative Jack Bergman and Mike Bishop. They are safe. We'll have much more on this a little bit later today here on Local 4. We'll be right back. The All right, welcome back, everybody. In good health for you this afternoon. Tracking ticks. Studies find ticks are moving into areas that they really didn't used to be, and some of those ticks are carrying dangerous diseases. And all day today, our Dr. Frank McGeorge is taking a closer look at the risk. He joins us more uh, with more on how these ticks are moving. Exactly, Everard. You know, there's no doubt that we're hearing more often about ticks showing up in places they didn't used to be. So we went to Michigan State to talk to researchers about what's happening and why it could get a lot worse. When it comes to tracking ticks, Dr. Jean Sow is on the front lines. As a researcher at Michigan State, she's often found dragging a cloth through various spots in Michigan, collecting ticks to take back to the lab. But overall, Michigan's on a trajectory for having more ticks around every year. In Michigan, it's the black-legged or deer tick that can carry Lyme disease. Sow's research finds as ticks are moving, so are cases of Lyme disease. While the risk is still higher up north and on the western side of the state, I believe that in the future, most of the counties in Michigan will have established black-legged ticks. So how are they moving? Ticks can't fly. Well, they're hitching a ride on animals like deer, chipmunks, and birds. If the white-tailed deer happens to be moving miles, then the white-tailed deer um, may drop that tick off in a new area. Mild winters may also be contributing to the increase in ticks. Some experts predict this could be the worst year ever for ticks in Michigan. Sow says that may be true for years to come. As the tick has been spreading in Michigan, um, it is true that every year is going to be a worse tick year than the previous year. Sow wants people to be aware that they need to check themselves, their kids, and their pets for ticks. Tick repellent can reduce the risk of getting bit, but if you do, save the tick to be identified or tested. Now, different types of ticks can potentially carry different diseases, and we've put a link on the health page where you can send a picture of the tick for help identifying it. And you can also send live ticks to the state for testing. So coming up at four today, see how you can tell if you've been bitten by a tick and what to do if you have. Very eye-opening. Thank you, Doc. Uh, a fire rips through a high-rise apartment building in London, killing at least 12 people. Take a look. You can see the fast moving blaze completely engulf this 24 story apartment tower. The inferno lit up the night sky, spewing black smoke from the windows of that tower. And we've learned that more than 200 firefighters were there to battle that blaze. 74 people were hurt and the number of fatalities could rise. The fire still burning more than 12 hours later. Very sad. We'll be right back with a check of your forecast with Paul Gross. Are you an injured? 
All right, let's get you caught up on what's going on with our weather. First of all, warm if you're heading out at this noon hour, but not as hot as the last couple of days. 81 over in Detroit, Howell at 77, 76 in Lapeer, and 78 over in Monroe. Kind of a broad view of what's going on. Well, I've said it before. If you see something that looks like a question mark on the old satellite radar map, well, that's a well-developed storm system, but it's not going to move a whole lot the next several days. So this cold front back behind here, it's going to take literally all the way into the weekend before it moves through our direction. So let's talk about what's going on close up. Here's radar and you can see uh, nothing violent here. In fact, there have been just a couple of lightning strikes here. We'll zoom in a bit to show you the most notable rain moving through eastern Oakland County right now. And again, it's been a dry month. Metro airports only had 0.04 inches of rain during the first half of this month. So we need the rain. Now this rain's not falling at Metro, but some of us do get this rain here in the mid hour. You can see eastern half of Oakland County. We're getting soaked pretty good. That's good news. But this is again not violent rain. So let me show you how the computer model is handling this through the afternoon. This batch of rain is going to essentially start to fizzle out. And so by the evening rush hour, we should be mostly dry. But look what's happening to the west. And I'm going to step you through this here almost hour by hour here by 8 o'clock. This is a uh, line of perhaps severe storms moving our way by 10 o'clock. Take a look. Notice the trend. It's starting to shrink a bit, but we still have potentially some severe storms. So this is basically the far western part of the area, west of US 23. As we move eastward another couple of hours, notice it's continuing to fall apart. And I want you to remember what you just saw because I'm going to come back to that in a second. But let me take you through the rest of the night. First of all, morning rush hour and the rest of the night are going to be fine, dry. Then as we get into tomorrow, by afternoon, scattered storms pop up and these have the potential to be severe as well. So let's talk about that severe risk. This is first of all for today, this afternoon into the evening, really late afternoon into the evening. What we just talked about, those storms are going to be stronger to the west. So that's where there's a slight risk. There's kind of a one to five scale here, if you will, on the severe risk. So this is a category two, if you will, slight risk. Then eastward, you see how things diminish. And then tomorrow, it's just a marginal view of the uh, of the uh, uh, a marginal risk of the uh, severe storm. So it's more of a scattered, uh, more of a marginal risk for the day tomorrow. Now for this afternoon, what we're looking at 84 degrees. Best chance for storms are this evening. Again, these uh, showers in the area now are going to diminish. And then as we get into the ball game tonight, warm and dry for the game. Looks like near the end of the game, we could see a thunderstorm. And then really the rest of the forecast uh, warm through the weekend, then big cooling by early next week. Alrighty, Paul, thank you. Uh, we do have a Help Me Hank recall alert for you. You are going to want to check your refrigerators for possibly contaminated salads. About 2,000 pounds of salad and slaw kits sold at Michigan Kroger stores are being recalled because of possible listeria. CC Kitchens has recalled ready to eat meat and poultry salad packages that were made between May 31st and June 5th. This recall includes a long list of its salads. Thankfully, though, no illnesses tied to the products have been reported. We'll be right back with an update to the breaking news that we are following out of Virginia in just a minute.